Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here with the miserable liberal Steph Zabarano and Ron Placone. Hey. Hola. Howdy, howdy. So guess what? The uh, w- I don't know if you've noticed. I-, I live in the Los Angeles area. I'm originally from Chicago. And um, <laughs> uh, pro- housing is unaffordable. They're not building enough affordable housing. So that's putting the pressure on renters. It's putting the pressure on first-time home buyers. You know, um, I live in a not affluent part <laughs> of the city. Not affluent at all. Regular people live here next to me. Regular, normal people. Um, and our houses, we spend way more on our housing than we should. Uh, you're supposed. They say you're supposed to spend like 30% or less on your housing. That's mm-hmm. what they say, whoever they is. And in Cal, well, here's, they did a study. Harvard did a study recently. Uh, It's by a joint center for housing studies of Harvard University, the state of the nation's housing 2017. So they've come to some pretty good conclusions. Uh, Did you know that one third of households in 2015 were cost burdened? That's the term they use, cost burdened, meaning they spend 30% or more of their income to cover housing costs. So I guess maybe it's even less than 30%, they say. I, I was always heard the number in my head was 30% of your income should go towards your housing. I, I, maybe that's I what I thought. I always thought it should never be more than a third. Or never so more than like a third. So I guess like a 33, okay. and it yeah. should never, ever be more than that. So here they say, if you're spending 30% or more, you are considered cost burdened. Uh, of that's that, tying it up and putting a bow on it, yeah. isn't it? Cost burden. <laughs> like, dude, they're breaking my bank. Oh, you're cost burden. Oh, poor, you're cost burden. Poor fella. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to that guy? He's cost burden. <laughs> Poor cost burden. Uh, of that group of the people spending 30% or more of their incomes to cover their housing course, a cost of that group, nearly 19 million people are paying more than 50% of their income to cover their housing needs. And I'm going to say most of that's probably happening here in, in the Los Angeles, the greater Los Angeles metropolitan area. Um, it's amazing. Uh, so right, So in my neighborhood... Regular house, one toilet, one bathroom, two bedroom is uh, almost, it's over a half a million dollars easy. What? So to buy that house, you got to come up with a freaking hundred thousand dollars down payment. Who can do that? So I don't know what's going on. Uh, I don't, I do not know. <laughs> so well, here, you know, something else I like, so we can like expand the, the reach a little bit. Uh, the sentence that I've heard before uttered was, man, I think I want to move to LA cause it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> Who said that to me once? My sister, she lives in San Francisco. So, I mean, it's crazy. Yes. Some of these, I mean, and, and what she has to deal with, I mean, she has like a, a studio pretty much with her boyfriend and they pay like, I think like about four grand in rent. I mean, really? Is, yeah, it is insane. Well, that's the big deal with teachers in San Francisco. Most of them cannot live inside the city. <laughs> so that's mm-hmm. the weird thing, right, Steph? So then they have to import their teachers to come teach their kids. Isn't that weird? Well, the high school that I teach at, there are million-dollar homes across the street. You could afford What it? teacher can afford even trying to come up with a down payment? Who can come up with a down payment now? So to buy a, so a million-dollar house, the down payment is $200,000. Minimum, right? That's what you got to put down. If you have good credit. Who's got that? Yeah. Who's got two? You got 200 grand sitting in your <laughs> in your top drawer? <laughs> I don't understand. Rainy day fund. So so here, there's more to this. Um, it depends on household type. Families with kids. Oh, so here's what they do. So when people don't have the money, they cut back on stuff, right? So if you have to spend more than 30% of your, if you're cost burdened, People start to have to, you have to cut costs other places. And it depends on household types. Families with kids, they cut back pretty severely on food. Ah, guess who needs that? That's no biggie. Uh, that was said by Jennifer Molinsky, a senior research associate at the center. Older adults cut back a lot on health care. Well, once again, no, no big deal, especially as you get older. It's, you know richest country in the world our kids don't have food and our old people don't have medicine richest country in the world you know what that's called that's called a fucked up system that's a broken system our capitalistic system right now as it's working in america is exactly what Karl marx said was going to happen it's freaking predatory exploitive and it eats itself 
which is why we have six companies bringing us all every newspaper, every radio station, every every TV news show, every magazine, every radio show, six companies. So this is the system we're in right now, the system that takes the richest country in the world and makes old people not afford medicine and kids can't get food. That's the system we're in. Uh, moving on, in 2015, there were almost 25 million children living in cost burden households. Low-income families with children that are paying more than half their incomes to cover housing cut back the most on food, according to the report. They spend, those, those families who are cost burdened and are in poverty, they spend less than $300 a month on food. Compared with households with no cost burdens, which spend about $500 on food, so almost double. Isn't that something in America? Wow. I don't even think I could do that my, like for myself, like as an individual, like just $300 a month on food. $300 a month on food? That's... so. You're well, the, I think Sean Handy points out beans. beans and rice. Beans and rice. Beans and rice, oh, Ron. Oh, okay. I'm Get not your, I got a lot of friends, he says. He eats beans and rice. That's what Sean Handy says. <laughs> to make ends meet, these families often do not buy enough food for their households or they substitute cheaper but less nutritious foods either of which can jeopardize their children's health and development, the report stated. Low housing inventory levels have helped push up home prices as many markets struggle with the supply and demand imbalance. Bidding wars are common in some places. So what's happening is we know what the problem is. They're not building enough affordable housing. And the government goes, so... My developer friend wants to develop luxury condos in Los Angeles. Guess what we're going to get? Luxury condos. If you're a real estate developer and you want to develop high-end rental properties, guess what we're getting? High-end rental properties. We're not getting affordable housing in Los Angeles or San Francisco or New York. Nowhere. Which is why we're getting screwed in America. People in America have to spend 30 to 50% of their income on their frickin' housing. Home prices fell off a cliff after the 2007 housing crash, but they have been rising and last year surpassed their pre-recession peak. How scary is that? So the last time housing prices were this high, it was called a bubble that was manufactured by the predatory loaning of... Wall Street, and also their what used to be considered illegal practices, now they're legal. They turned investment banking into casino hopping. And spoiler alert, guess what bubbles do? Bop. So we're back there now. We're back to the where we were at the peak of the bubble. We're back. Feel good about that? By the way, Sears stock went up last week. What? Sears closing stores. So something weird is happening. There's a bubble happening. I'm not a... Again, I people like me, I think, disqualify themselves of going, well, I'm not an economist. Well, guess what? Every economist was 100% wrong about what the F was going on <laughs> yeah, and what led to our crash. Guess who wasn't wrong? Me. I've told this story before that I was walking around my neighborhood in 2006 and I couldn't believe, like, wait a minute, there aren't a bunch of doctors and lawyers and movie stars moving into my neighborhood. These are still regular blue-collar workers in my neighborhood, teachers, right, stuff like that, nurses, right, teachers, mm -hmm. nurses, regular people live in my neighborhood. How can they afford this, these houses? How can they afford a $700,000 one bathroom house? Well, it turns out they were the whole system, they weren't affording it. <laughs> turns out they had, they had no money down, no interest only loans. No, and then everything came crashing down. So I was asking that question. What? 
How is, what's going on? Something's fishy. Because I couldn't afford to buy a house in my old neighborhood right now, and nobody's moved out, and nobody's moved in. What's going on? So I was, we, we talked about this on our other podcast, mm-hmm. on comedy and everything else, before we were doing the Jimmy Dore show. I talked about this. I had a friend who was a mortgage bo- broker. <laughs> Who told me all about this? He says, yeah, they're not. It's all great. It's all crazy. There's no rules, and everybody's getting rich. So you know, Jimmy, I just want to add one more thing. You know, as you're talking about these families that are uh, food deprived and they they forgo nutritional food for their kids. Right now, in in our neighborhood, three grocery stores have shut down. Yeah. Yeah. Three yeah. three huge grocery stores have shut down in our neighborhood. Huh? By the way, Jeff Bezos just bought Whole Foods. The guy was worth $80 billion. Just bought Whole Foods. Just so you know. Yes, but doesn't he want to do charitable work? He wants to do charity now. That's another video. (laughs) Okay. Home prices fell off a cliff after the 2007 housing crash, but they have been rising and last year surpassed their pre-recession peak. That price appreciation has scared away many wannabe buyers. It hasn't scared them away. It's priced them out of the frickin' market. They have been forced to rent. Demand for rental units has increased and push-up prices also. Okay. As a result, the report found that 11 million renter households pay more than half their income on housing. A 3.7 million increase from 2001. So what the F? So uh, what's supposed to happen now is that this is supposed to be reported loudly and repeatedly until government does something about it. But this isn't going to be, and government isn't going to do anything about it. Let's just look at what the country, our freaking corporatized government has given us. People, the big GoFundMe, most of GoFundMes are because people are health that can't afford their health care. Old people are cutting back on their... The old are elderly. Kids can't get food. Half of our income is going towards housing. And nobody, nobody has a plan to fix any of this. Nobody's even freaking talking about it. We accept it as normal. Yes. Remember when we did a video about that GoFundMe commercial yes. where the, the product of their commercial was, hey, our, our old relative needs a hip replacement. Yes. So they're going to GoFundMe. This is normalized now. It, richest country in the world. It is. It is normalized. Here's the last part of the CNN article covering this. It says Miami has the highest percentage of cost burden renters. 62% of the people renting in Miami spend more than... Wow. Followed by Los Angeles. Yay. We Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yay. We're numbered. No, that's bad. <laughs> so 57% of renters in Los Angeles are what they consider to be cost burdened. That's almost six out of 10 renters cost burdened in a bad set. And there's no plans to fix Gar- Gar- Eric Garcetti has no plans to fix anything. And 94% of the 57% in Los Angeles are comedians too. So really uh-huh. there's. So uh, there you go. I'll, br- I'll, br- I'll bring you that uh, Harvard report. There's a, uh, it could have told you what I actually, it is kind of shocking. It's even worse than we thought. It's even worse than I thought. And you know, Jimmy, I I have to add this because it's been very startling when you drive through Los Angeles and you see one home after another that's a tent on the side of a freeway. Yeah. And oh, they yeah. are growing and growing. There's 10 cities now in Los Angeles, right? So we should go out and do a video on those people, except I don't know if they want to be, we'll, we'll ask. Yeah, yeah, there was a tent community outside of my old apartment complex in Silver Lake. So in a pretty you in know, a, urban part of the city. Right. There was like a community just behind some wood. So where I exit off the two freeway when I'm going to Hollywood, where I exit, there's a viaduct there and there's just tents. Uh, everybody's living in tents underneath there. These are Americans. I've lived here all my life. Never saw that. I have never seen that. Never saw that. I've seen I've seen poverty. That's not what I'm saying. I haven't seen this growing population of people having to live on the streets. Okay, richest country in the world. Going to spend another $55 billion on bombs next year. I mean, extra at, uh, on top of. Got to be looking out. Got to look out. Got to got to beat at least the next 13 countries. I you mean, know who got, isn't a got threat? Got a reputation. Yes, that's right. You got a reputation, Ron. You know those people li- sleeping under the bridge? You know who's not a threat to them? ISIS, Russia, Syria, Assad, Honduras, Iran, Libya. 
Somalia, Yemen. You know what is a threat to those people? Goldman Sachs, Amazon, the Washington Post, Wall Street, Walmart, the pharmaceutical industry, the health insurance industry. Most bankruptcies are caused by illnesses in America. Most bankruptcies are caused by illnesses and then you end up living in a tent. That's the threat to America. The predatory capitalistic system that we all think is great. Nancy Pelosi, we're just capitalists. That says, wait, no, we're fucking not. And we don't have to be.